Emmanuel Swedenborg thought that the divine love which God is sending us is automatically flowing out of us whenever we act with love in our lives. But this is not true. This love is only human in its nature and not part of the divine nature until we open our hearts to the inflowing of this divine love which God is sending us. No matter how much we act with human love and thereby develop it, it will never become divine love unless we pray to receive into ourselves this love that comes from God. When Swedenborg entered the spirit world he found out that we have to receive God's divine love into our souls before it can flow out of us and therefore his method for being a channel of the divine love needs to be altered. The following messages were transmitted through psychic mediumship. Now you will hear the basic Swedenborg formula for being a channel of divine love according to Emmanuel Swedenborg. After that, you will hear channel messages from Jesus and Swedenborg speaking from the spirit world and correcting the subtle but false assumption in the former teachings of Emmanuel Swedenborg. There is nothing more important for you to understand than the marriage of goodness and truth because this is how God and you connect. This is how it works. Divine good emanates from this divine love and divine good is accepted by angels and by us in divine truths. Truth being the only vessel for the good. So God is sending out love to you. But unless you have in your mind something like do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Love one another, love your neighbor. There's nowhere for that goodness to join up to. It can't move your heart. To the extent that the true elements are united to what is good within us then, we are united to the Lord and to This heaven. is why the union of the good and the true in the heavens is called the heavenly marriage, and why heaven is compared to a marriage in the word and is even called a marriage. It's why the Lord is called the bridegroom and husband, and heaven and the church are called the bride and wife. The marriage that happens is between the goodness and the truth, and it happens deep within you. I am here, Jesus. I desire to write concerning Mr. Swedenborg as to this matter. Mr. Swedenborg thought that all love was of the divine nature of God, and did not know or teach the difference between the natural love, which Mr. Swedenborg perceived to be of the divine and the divine love, which, when possessed by a man, makes that soul a new creature, endowed with the essence and substance of God's eternal soul. Mr. Swedenborg, therefore, did not know of the divine love in contradistinction to the natural love, which he perceived to be the divine love. I know it may seem strange that, after many years of trying to teach him the truth of the new birth, we were not successful in relating this distinction between the two kinds of love. Often, men will see themselves, the natural love, and the nature of their souls as being of the divine, which they are not. And such was the case with Mr. Swedenborg. He perceived the qualities of the natural love of his soul as being of the divine nature and love of God. And at the time of his trips into the spirit world and the subsequent teachings he taught, he had not any of this divine nature dwelling within him, and had no true perception of the truth of the divine love of God in contradistinction to the natural love of a man's soul. I wish to go into further detail concerning the message of the Father's love and its availability to all mankind through prayer to him for its inflow, and the reasons why the churches as they are constituted today do not possess the message of the glad tidings of immortality. As I preached it when I made my appearance on earth as the Messiah of God, the whole message of my ministry while I was on earth, the glad tidings that the Father's divine love was available to the human soul and that it is this love that transforms the human soul into a divine soul and thus enables mankind to achieve immortality, has been misconstrued into a love that is human and subject to defilement. And the will of the Father, that man should be made one with him in his love, has not been carried out and is not being taught by the churches. The love, then, that is now the concern of the churches which claim Christianity, is not that divine love which I came to make known and available to the Jews and to all mankind, but is that love which is human only, and which was given to humankind with the implanting of the human soul into the living being called man. That soul was created in the image of God, and not his essence, so that, regardless of what the churches teach, the soul of man is not divine, and man cannot look within himself to develop any so-called divine spark for there is none. But he may simply develop the human soul qualities that he already possesses, and his human love for his fellow man and his human love for God, as Moses had already taught. The Father's love comes into man only by prayer to the Father for it, and not merely purifies the human soul but transforms it into a divine soul. And this is the reason why Christians, 
despite their clinging to the so-called vicarious atonement, are so much concerned with moral backsliding and sinning after they have been told they have won salvation through belief in Jesus' name, and that Jesus' blood has redeemed them from sin. And that is why, as I have said, Christianity today is, regardless of the preaching of the priests and pastors, merely a religion identical with Judaism, placing its ultimate reliance upon the Ten Commandments of Moses for human soul purification, without the power of the new heart which I came to bring to the Jews and to all mankind. And that is why the churches do not know the message of immortality through prayer to the Father for his love as I preached it when on earth, as the Messiah of God. With all my blessings, and those of the Father, I am Jesus of the Bible and Master of the Celestial Heaven.